very good morning from something a little bit different here on Theme Park Worldwide. Now, if you follow the channel for quite a while, you'll know that when I like going to the theme parks, I also like to see the local area too. So when I went to Disneyland Paris, I went round Paris, did the Eiffel Tower and did a vlog. Uh, when I went to Barcelona, we went and saw the cathedral. Uh, we went and did all the cable cars and we did a vlog. And it's no different when I've come here to Rome because Rome is an absolutely fascinating place. Now, I'm not really up there on my history, but I absolutely love looking at old buildings. And Rome has probably got more history here uh, than any other city in Europe. It looks absolutely stunning and I can't wait to get stuck in and see what there is uh, to see. So, like I say, it's got nothing to do with theme parks. There's going to be no rides or anything like that. It's going to be just me with this map here. And I've got around eight hours in the city today before I have to go home. Uh, you know, you might be thinking, why am I in Rome if you just come across this vlog? Uh, I've literally uh, done two theme parks while I've been here. I've done Rainbow Magic Land and Cine Cities World. So check both of them vlogs out, um, you know, and see what I got up to while I was out here. But I couldn't come to Rome without seeing the Colosseo. And here it is. Look at this. Absolutely beautiful. You don't realise on camera the actual sheer size of this thing. Uh, and the best thing about it is we're going inside in a few seconds um, but look at that absolutely beautiful all the arches and I don't know much about history so I'm hoping there's going to be some plaques and stuff around to sort of tell me what's going on uh, we'll have a look around the metro system as you know I've got a bit of an obsession with the London Underground and we've even got the uh, we've even got a London Underground quilt cover at home uh, so I like the Underground so we're going to have a look around their metro system which looks tiny I mean look at the, the metro map here look at that compared to the London Underground there's not really much there um, so yeah, I'm going to start off here at the Colosseum and then go around and sort of see where the day goes really. I mean, we'll go up to St. Peter's, um, wherever it's gone now. There we go, St. Peter's up here. So I'm down here at the moment at the Colosseum. So that's quite a way away. We'll navigate the metro system around here. This looks quite a good republic around here. Uh, we're going to have a look at the Travi Fountains just here. I don't know, we'll just have a good look around and sort of see what there is. Of course, down that way you've got all the sort of ruins and things, so we're going to look at all that. Um, you know, I might get names of things wrong and stuff in here. I'm awful at pronouncing things, but I thought it'd be a good day. I couldn't come to Rome and not do a vlog around the city. So it's nice and early, it's 8 o'clock. I've heard the Colosseum gets busy, so we're going to get there early and, uh, and get started. So, here's my map. Here's the camera, and here's me. Let's go. Let's go and find where the queue line is. What a stunning building, though. So I'm in, I'm definitely glad I got here for opening though. Uh, just a little tip, get here for 8.30 because the queue gets absolutely huge outside or pre-book your tickets online. But I'm here, 12 euro, absolute bargain to come and see a piece of history like this. Oh wow, look at this. You don't understand the scale of it when you're sitting there at home. Look at this, wow. Of course we can go upstairs onto that next level there as well. So we'll go up there and have a look round. Amazing to see. It's just one of them things, it's just something that you've got to come and see in your life, isn't it? Wow. I don't really have a clue where I'm going, so I'm just gonna sort of follow the signs, have a look round, and hope they'll give you some facts on the way. I'm sure there's like some facts balls and stuff as we go round. Beautiful day for you though. If you've watched our other vlogs from this trip, you'll see, oh, that's a good aerial picture. You'll see how uh, it's been around 30 degrees, 28 to 30 degrees. There you go. It's a good picture, that. From above. Right, let's go have a look, see if we can get upstairs. Don't really have a clue where I'm going with this one, so you're gonna have to bear with me. It's a whole fun of exploring though, that's what I like doing. It's great just seeing these sites and for someone who's 22, I've not done bad seeing as much as I have really. Crazy thing that was built so many years ago. Ah, visitor route entrance to exhibition, meeting point, lift, disabled route, toilets. We're going up here. The steps. Oh, 
There's a lot of scaffolding and stuff around the back. Um, as you'll see from the outside when we have a walk around afterwards. Um, you know, so I'm, I assume that it's a constant restoration project with the Colosseum. Um, you know, it's something that they just continue doing, I suppose. Oh, lots of steps. It says there was lift access though, so they must have put a lift in here in more recent years. Whew. Crazy to think just how old this is. Here we go. See, a bit of restoration going on around there. You don't realise just how big it is. I mean, I, didn't, I knew it was going to be big, but I didn't think it was going to be quite this size. I mean, for seeing pictures and stuff, I was kind of imagining it to be half the size it is. Whew. It's worn me out those steps. <laughs> a bit of merch in there as well. A bit of merch paradise. But you can't come to Rome and do the theme parks and not see, uh, you know, the Colosseum, can you? I mean, yeah, it's just got to be done. There we go. Here we go, there's your lift. <laughs> Somehow I don't think that's as old as the rest of the building, do you? <laughs> it's this little uh, little model. What have we got here then? Reconstructing the podium wall. Recent archaeological excavations. Archaeological? Can't even say it right, archaeological. There we go. I think that's right. Must cost a fortune to spend money on this. Here you go, a large number of animals were used in the amphitheatre during vanishings in displays of tamed animals and for executions. There you go. Wouldn't get away with that in this day and age, would you? Right, how do we get outside? Ooh. Got his map. View over underground areas, that'll do. Still can't believe how huge it is. I mean, there's got to be some sort of fact sheet somewhere telling you like how many people this used to hold, but it's the size of some of our modern day arenas. So I found a little uh, fax board just here and it's fascinating to think just how much the world and how life has changed since these days. The fact that people would sit around here and watch, you know, executions and things, but something that hasn't changed here. So during the intervals, there are performances by jugglers, acrobats and magicians. There you go. So Penn and Teller performed here. Maybe not. Just found another information board just here. Uh, and when you look down the bottom, like I've just shown you down there, uh, all the little corridors and things. Uh, so you've got 15 vaulted corridors with walls and turf blocks and brick at the sides of a central gallery along the axis of the ellipse. Uh, and these rooms host the equipment needed for the games, so weapons, cages for the animals, and machinery, including 80 winch operated lifts, which raised men stage sets and wild beasts up to the arena level through the trap doors and inclines. I mean, that's fascinating. 
So obviously what they've done here is restore a bit of the floor um, to show what it would have been like. So that floor, of course, would have covered all these up. But yeah, 15 vaulted corridors underneath. Crazy to think, really. So I've spent a good 45 minutes or so looking around the upper levels, absolutely beautiful. Um, but I've now come down on the lower levels, closer to the underground section. And as I mentioned when we were upstairs a few minutes ago, you can really sort of see where all the animals and weapons and things were kept in detail now we're down here. There you go. Right well, from up on the... Uh, sort of first level up there you don't realize sort of how tall these walls and things are fascinating Wow, the Colosseum was absolutely beautiful. It's just one of them things you've got to come and see. Uh, it makes me want to learn a bit more about history and things because it's absolutely fascinating to come and see things like that and I really enjoyed it. So there you go, that's the Colosseum in Rome. Really nice and easy to get here. There's a, a metro station just around the corner, just outside the Colosseum and it's aptly named Colosseo. Uh, so there you go, you can't miss that one. Really good attraction to come and see. Uh, definitely one of my favourite things I've ever seen in one of these cities actually. So let's have a look at this arch now, which is just outside the Colosseum. It's like a mini Arc de Triomphe from Paris. <laughs> Considering it's only quarter to ten in the morning, it's absolutely round around here. And look at the queues now to get into the Colosseum. Oh, there you go, bit of a change on the floor away. There we go. So look, you look at the detail on some of these buildings and it's crazy. I mean, look at this. All the little details going into the stonework on that. I love just getting a map and exploring. I mean, you know, a lot of people when they come abroad, they don't sort of like using the public transport and metro systems and things, but that's all part of the fun. I mean, if you ever get lost, then yeah, there's always someone to ask, you know, you, you, you're not in a mess like you think you would be. And that's all part of the fun. There we go. Right. Time for site number two. Just going to go and have a look around here now. Palantino. You can see what we can see up here. So right next to the Colosseum. Look at that there. It's absolutely stunning. We're going to go and have a look up here now in the Roman Forum. A lot of restoration always going on around here, which is good. It's a bit like what Disney do on Main Street, <laughs> where they've put like what it would look like on the uh, on the canvas coming up the scaffolding. <laughs> if you ever go to Disney during maintenance period, that's what you'll see. Absolutely roasting today. I'm sure I've said that it's in the past two vlogs from Rome uh, while I was doing the theme parts, but it seems to be getting hotter every day. Well, it probably is. I suppose we are getting close to summer, but. I try to think what it's like in July or August here. Right, let's have a look here then. Palantino. Okay, so I'm inside Palantino. And the best thing is, it comes on your ticket, which is only 12 euros. So you did the Colosseum and this for the same price. Wow, look at this. So they don't rip you off, really, when it comes to seeing these, which is good. There we go. I can now see where the saying, Rome wasn't built in a day, comes from. This looks like a huge place to explore. But I'm doing well for time, I mean... It's quite early on still, it's nice and quiet in here. Everyone's at the Colosseum, I suppose they'll do that first with it being limited capacity and then head down here. There we go, Roman Forum this way. There we go. It's 
very peaceful, it's a Sunday morning. It's a lot less hectic in here. Foro Romano, this way. I love exploring. <laughs> So numerous tombs dating between the 9th and the 7th centuries BC were excavated in this area in 1902. Interesting fact for you there. The scale of some of these buildings, fantastic to see. It's just one of them things that, you know, I've just always wanted to see in person. I know I'm not a huge fan of, of history, I don't really know much, but in terms of just seeing these buildings, it's impressive enough just to see sort of how they built things like this. I mean, look at it, it's absolutely stunning. Another thing I'd love to go and see at some point is the uh, pyramids out in Egypt. So I'm sure that's something I'll do at some point. Don't think there's any theme parts I can do while I'm around there. You never know. <laughs> this is stunning though. I actually walked past here last night. Uh, there's a, the pathway just over there, which is on the main road. I walked past there last night and thought, you know, I can't wait to come down into the Roman Forum and see it all in the morning. And here I am. Here we go. Foro Romano. The Roman Forum lies in the valley surrounded by the Palatine uh, Hills. There you go. The area is occupied by the cemeteries of various settlements. Later, the villages began to merge in the Forum valley naturally became the place where their inhabitants met for economic transactions and social activities. Let's go and have a look. Stunning. It's crazy to think that all this is still standing to be honest. Look at all the uh, carvings in the wall. This is quite clever, we've got a bit of projection mapping going on here. There we go, look. I suppose this is showing what it would have been like. Very nice, all you can hear is the fans from them projectors. <laughs> look at all that tech, we've got a truss up there and everything. Oh, it's gone dark. Hey, there you go. This is cool. Put some thought into this, haven't they? I didn't quite realise how big the Roman Forum was going to be. I mean, I wish I had more time to explore this. I mean, I've said do your two theme parks and then come and have a day in Rome. But I don't think a day is really enough to see everything. Uh, I mean, I've been walking around here for around 45 minutes now. <sighs> so much to see and 
so many different like little exhibitions and artifacts to see along the way. <sighs> this is a big hill. <laughs> I think this is going onto the roof of that building that has had all the projections in just. <sighs> oh, this is nice. But yeah, there's so much to see and I haven't really got time. <laughs> Fantastic. I can't believe just how big the Roman Forum is. I mean, you could spend a whole day just looking around this. It's absolutely huge and there's so much to do. And the fact you get this and the Colosseum uh, for just 12 euros as well, you have a really cheap day out and see some fantastic sights that you can't see anywhere else in the world. I mean, these buildings are stunning. It kind of, it's just weird seeing it because I'm going to relate back to theme parks now because of course we are a theme park channel, um, if you haven't realised. Um, but yeah, like you go to places like Europa Park and uh, Park Asterix and they've all got sort of themed areas, uh, all sort of themed around Rome. And to see these buildings, it, it's just weird because not, I'm used to seeing like recreations of them, not the actual real thing. Just like these columns and things. It's, it's so, and that might sound really strange and weird to some people, but it is. I'm used to seeing it as theming, not actually the real thing. Fascinating. I'm absolutely roasting. I'm being stupid and I've not brought any water. I need a drink, really. So I have to try and find somewhere to get a drink and head on to my next site. What a beautiful day. I really enjoyed the Roman Forum, it was fantastic to see and it's just one of those things in your lifetime uh, that you need to come and do. Uh, this here is some more of it, however, this is on the other side of the road, so I've just come out of the exit which is there, uh, cross over and this is free just to walk around uh, and they've even put a little seating area just here, I don't know if this is here all the time or not, it looks a bit temporary, uh, but so you can just sort of see it. Stunning to see, absolutely fantastic, like I say, if you're really into your history, you could spend like a week here doing everything, you know, there's so much to see. And that's just from the stuff that I've covered already, never mind the other sites. So you can see just that big building there, which is what I'm heading to. I don't really have a clue what it is. Um, but there's a lift shaft on the left hand side of it, so you see where the glass elevator is? Just there. I'll zoom in a bit for you. There you go, and there's actually people on the top there, so that'd be an amazing view if we can get up there. So I'm going to see how I go about getting up there. If there's a big queue or anything, I won't bother, but hopefully it might be something I can get up there to see. What a beautiful day. All right, so let's go and investigate. I'm not too sure what, what it is, but it's a massive building, I know that. It's got a big horse on the top as well. Now, I don't have a clue what that building is, but I know one thing for sure, it's absolutely huge. I mean, the camera doesn't really do that justice. I mean, look at a person just down here. And then, just at, hey, on segways. Oh, that would have been fun. Could have attached a GoPro to it. Uh, you know, and then look how far the building goes back. It's absolutely huge. So I want to find out how you can go inside, whatever it is. Or if you can go inside, or I assume you can. There's people on the steps over there, and there's the lift around the back. So go have a look. You don't know unless you have a go, do you? At the end of the day, got to have an explore. These roads must always be closed off around here. I mean, there's no one really driving down them. Just from here all the way down to the Colosseum, it's just like no one can drive down it. Everybody just walks down the road. Saying that, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so they're coming down. Must be special people by the looks of it. There you go. This is a lot of steps, but I'm in. I'm not really sure where I'm going, but it's been free to get to this point so far anyway. Uh, I assume you have to pay for the lift if we do find that. Oh, I see you whistling now. Oh, no sitting down on the steps, there you go. Oh, got some fire out the front of here. Some guards. It's like Buckingham Palace or something. 
Buckingham Palace doesn't have fire out the front there. Very nice. Alright, let's go and get inside. Well, I guess I found the lift. This looks good. Seven euros to go to the top. Quite pricey. Considering uh, the Eiffel Tower in Paris is only, what, three euros something to climb the stairs? It's got to be done. Just for the lift cred. We like a good lift cred. Especially if it's in a weather spoon, it's in Blackpool. If you don't know what I'm going on about, check out the Blackpool Pleasure Beach vlog. Ah, right, let's go up. Lift crowd. So I've reached the top and absolutely stunning views. It's definitely worth paying the seven euros and coming up here uh, for one of the tallest viewpoints in Rome. It was actually built in 1906 and here's a really good picture uh, of the building under construction. And there we go and then it opened on the 4th of June 1911. Look at that there, all the people still on the building. Absolutely stunning. Somehow I don't think that the lift was here then. But on that picture there is people standing where we are now on the roof, so there must just be some sort of steps coming up here. Well, I suppose if the lift breaks then you need to. Look at that for a view. So I was stood somewhere down there just. It's a bit windy up at top. And if we look over in the distance you can just see St Peter's where we're going a little bit later, right over there. Quite a way out of the centre. Yeah. Really good viewpoint though. You can pretty much see everything around the area from here. Huge area, you don't realise just how much space that area covers. Tell you what though, it looks a lot busier in there than when I first went in. And of course in the background the Colosseum. You really realise the scale of the Colosseum when you see it from a distance. But it still looks huge even from up here. Lift crad was worth it. I think this is going to be the biggest tip in this vlog, but make sure you get to the sites early. Look at the queue now for the Roman Forum. Yeah, absolutely huge. Oh, we've got a big flag. Oh, the flag. There we go. Yeah, it's a big queue. That is why you get to the Colosseum for opening at 8.30. Look at the queues there now. I was just speaking to some guys from America uh, and they've been waiting for around an hour and 15 minutes and they're still nowhere near the front. So that is why you get there 
early. Uh, but look at that, absolutely beautiful building. Uh, now the three sort of attractions that I've just seen uh, are all down this same street. Uh, so of course you've got the Coliseum just here. Uh, and then you've got the forum just there uh, and then you've got the huge building with the elevator down the bottom so all these are really close if you do want to come and see these of course it cost me 12 euros for the Colosseum and the forum and then it was 7 euros to go up the lift which isn't too bad and then here is Colosseo uh, metro station which is where I head in now and um, to go back to the Termini station, now as there's not many connecting lines on this metro system, uh, I'll have another look at the map and I'll show you how you go about buying tickets inside. Um, but you'll sort of see how you have to go back to the Termini quite a few times, which is the central station uh, where I've started all my journeys the three days I've been in Rome. Um, you know, so we'll head back to there and then head out to our next location, probably get some food, some nice Italian cuisine, uh, probably a McDonald's, <laughs> and then um, head off to the next uh, location. Let's get a look in the metro station. So here's your map of the metro. Pretty basic compared to the likes of Paris or London. Uh, but there's the Termini, which is right in the middle. Uh, and then at the moment, we're just down here at the Colosseum. Uh, so what we need to do later on is get over to here. Uh, so to go down, to, to get to there, we've got to go back to the Termini and then go across. Uh, so what I'm going to do is go back to there, get something to eat, and then we'll get on uh, line A, uh, the orange line, up to um, St. Peter's, the Vatican. All right, let's go. system uh, the stages are a lot bigger like look how wide the platforms are in here uh, the stages are absolutely huge meaning the trains as you just saw are also bigger uh, and this is powered differently as well instead of the electricity coming in uh, underneath the trains it's actually coming from the rails above just here one thing I have just noticed as well is they've got Bose speakers there you go look we've got a nice Bose speaker in the metro station Nice and easy that. Take, it's literally two stops up to get back to the Termini uh, from the Colosseo station, so not too bad at all. Pretty much the same as London Underground in terms of escalators and things. Uh, and there's a lot more lifts and stuff here though. And forgetting about. In terms of your tickets, if you just want to do a single journey across the city, uh, it's one euro fifty, which is a lot better than the four quid that they try and charge you back in London. Um, you know, and then along with that, uh, you've also got a 24 hour pass, which is just over seven euros, and that lasts for 24 hours. That's what I bought. So last night, I did a bit of sights last night, uh, went round, had something to eat, uh, went to the ice bar, which was great. Uh, and then I also wanted to do some more traveling today, obviously for you guys on the vlog. Um, so I bought the 24 hour ticket, which meant that it was valid up until I leave tonight to go back to the airport. So, and that was just over seven euros, so an absolute bargain. You also do a three day ticket, which I believe is um, six, 16 euro for three days. Yeah, bargain. And you also don't have to scan your ticket to get out here. It's just straight through the barrier. But when, if you do want to buy your tickets, it's from these machines just over here. Wherever you come, and then you buy them just there. Nice and easy, yeah, except card and also cash. If you're ever stuck with something to eat whilst you're in Rome, you can always find a McDonald's. Closest one, next to the Rome Termini. There you go, can't get any closer. Now either I've come to Rome at the wrong time of year, or they've got the Christmas decorations up early or late. I'm not too sure, but one or the other. Anyway, so I've got my map. So I've just got line A up to the metro station called Ottavio, uh, St. Peter's. There you go, there it is on, on the red line on line A. So I'm just following my map now. I can't go wrong with a good old map. I know that Google's always there to help me, but it's more fun if you use a map instead of asking Siri all the time. This is nice, it's got some really nice buildings around here. And according to this, St. Peter's Square and the Vatican is literally straight down this street. Down the bottom, hopefully. Had a really nice McDonald's, as you saw. 
can't go wrong with the McDonald's. The staff do really well down there, and uh, like understanding English as well. Saying that, I don't know, is, is uh, Italian from McNugget anything different? I don't know. Chicken nugget. They like the scooters here, don't they? Yeah, so we'll just follow this road down, see where it leads to, I think. I mean, in terms of the metro, it doesn't really run round very far, like you've seen by how small the map is. Like, look here, there's only the stations at the top of the map, just up here. Uh, all this here, there's no stations at all, you know, so... No, 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 no I don't want a leaflet. Yeah, <laughs> being bought worldwide on YouTube, yeah. Ciao. <laughs> yeah, as I was saying before we tried to shove a leaflet in my face. Uh, you know, there isn't really that many metro stations. You have to go about on foot. Uh, you know, in between. I mean, yes, I've just got the metro to there, but there isn't one right by the actual uh, site that we want to see, so you've got to use your map, you know, you've got to use your feet as well. Makes it good fun. We're <laughs> <laughs> always trying to sell you stuff around here or give you leaflets for something. I'm pretty sure this is it, straight up through these double archways. Cari fratelli e sorelle, buongiorno. Il Vangelo di oggi ci offre alcune espressioni pronunciate da Gesù durante la festa della dedicazione del Tempio di Gerusalemme, che si celebrava alla fine di dicembre. Egli si trova proprio nell'area del tempio e forse Abbiamo salutato Talk about good timing, I didn't realise that every Sunday at 12 noon the Pope comes onto the balcony just outside his apartment uh, and does a speech for around 15 to 20 minutes. It was good to see, I didn't expect to come to St Peter's Square, the Vatican, and see the Pope. So there we go, it was a little, uh, little bonus there. It sort of explains why it was so busy at first, I didn't even realise you did that, but I, uh, I thought there must be something going on for it to be so busy and everybody having banners and things, but yeah, that was really nice. Couldn't really get too far into St Peter's Square. Uh, I was absolutely heaving. Uh, but yeah, I saw a little bit from just out the side. It was nice to see. Uh, and so to see that looks good. There were some nice fountains there as well. We love a good fountain, don't we? So, right, back on the uh, metro now. What a beautiful day. I'm absolutely sweating. Hottest day of the year so far for me. Hey, everyone likes a good offer here. One euro, one euro. It's like people in Poundland back home. Look at this. Got the baskets out, look. One euro, one euro. Look at them all. They love a good bargain. When you think a little bit about the public transport in other European cities, it's so much better than back home. I mean, you've got the tram system running down the streets here, you've got the metro, you've got buses everywhere. Yeah, the transport just seems so much better over here. Uh, however, our underground system in London's great, but when you look at other sort of aspects to travel around the UK, unless it's in a major city, um, the transport isn't great. And to be honest, even in the major cities, the transport's quite pricey for what it is. Over here, the fact you can get, you know, a whole day, 24 hours for seven euro, it's very cheap. It's about five quid, just under five quid in today's exchange rate, 2016. 
brought a map. So I've just come out the uh, metro station which is closest to the Trevi Fountains. It's on the same line, it's on line A so I've stopped off here on the way back um, from the Vatican but I've come up through some steps just there. It's brought me out on this square with a big fountain in the middle. That isn't the Trevi Fountain so I hope not. <laughs> um, it's brought me in the middle just here but luckily it's a good job we had the map to find out it's actually down this way. It's also there. Look, they've got brown signs about but they're not very clear really. Nice, I might have to have an ice cream after. Oh, look at that. Nice. And here it is. And there's the fountain. It's amazing how many people have come out just to see a bit of water trickling down. If I took them to Blackpool Pleasure Beach and showed them Amanda Thompson's fountains, they'd all uh, explode with excitement, I think. On a serious note, it is very nice. All the stonework on all these buildings in Rome looks really fresh, you know, really well looked after. Let's go have a closer look. I've just had about a 15 minute walk down from the Trevi Fountains, uh, which was nice, but it wasn't anything that spectacular. I mean, there's a nicer fountain in the middle of this roundabout. Look at that one. That's a nice one there, Dean's Fountain Services. Um, but there you go. That's pretty much it for this sightseeing vlog around Rome. I mean, it's been a whistle stop tour. I've not done all the sites, but I've done the main ones and the ones that I knew about before coming. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot more to see in Rome, but I've been limited to time. I've got to head back to the airport to get my flight back. But I've had a really good time. It's been fantastic. It was great to see the Colosseum. I enjoyed the lift crowd as well. Lift crowd was good. Uh, you know, and just walking around uh, all the ruins of Rome, absolutely fantastic, and I've really enjoyed it. Uh, as all my vlogs have pretty much started and ended this trip, it's back to the Termini train station, uh, which is believe it's just along here. That means I'm going to wrap this vlog up. Hope you've enjoyed it. Make sure you check out my other vlogs from this trip to Rome. Like I said, I didn't just come to see the city uh, and do the sights. Of course, I did some theme parks as well. I went to Cine City World uh, yesterday, so check out the vlog from that. The link is in the description. And also Rainbow Magic Land. Two fantastic parks all within the Rome area. Thank you for watching Theme Park Worldwide. And that means it's time to cue those credits. See you later, guys. Thanks for watching.